Welcome to Three Furlongs Out. We're going to speak about the Derby, a very controversial Derby. Was it a good win or was it a bad year? Or was the horse that he set off too much fractions at the start? Did the rest have too much to do? I'm joined tonight by Kyle Blakely. How are you, Kyle? Not so bad yourself. I'm oh, very well. Well, where do you start with this Derby? I think the best place probably to start would be the winner, Serpentine. Made all, went clear from the 10 furlong mark, stayed on strongly, unchallenged. Where do you go from there? What's your view on the winner? Well, the winner is obviously given a very enterprising raid. Um, not too many people would have picked them out before. Good day for the bookies. Um, there's a lot of people crabbing it. On, obviously, you can see why they're crabbing it. Like, but at the same time, he's only just fractionally slower than Love who everybody was raving about winning the Oaks. So, you know, time will tell how good a horse he is. Um, like, if you had a hard look at his maiden that he'd won, I know the birth facts of the matter, you know, you probably wouldn't force you into backing him, but um, he ran on his maiden o- over mile two, and his time was two minutes 10.89, Buckhurst won a Group 3 race over same course and distance half an hour later. He was four seconds slower. Now, there's only three in Buckhurst race. They can turn into a slow f- affair and a sprint at the end. But even so, you know, you, you cut yeah, him out. I, I think you're right with what you're saying there. The, the sectional timings don't lie. Um, he didn't really go a frantic gallop. Did he, from the start, I didn't think that he was horse to make a forward move he sort of as the race went on he just sort of went further ahead at no stage of the race was he sort of driven right forward to make a forward run you would have said at the start there wasn't going to be a clear leader and then as the race went on it just developed um 25 to 1 it sort of says it all um he only won his broke his maiden duck last week and i'm at mcnamara he's a he's actually a qualified accountant down at mcnamara i think he as someone said there he got his fractions right here because Many people blast off to do that. No matter if you're going fast, going slow, whatever, the horse doesn't make it home. The race clock in his head was fantastic. The wind by that there much and round a track that's not, as you well know, it's an undulating track. And I think that even the the terrain of that course on the television doesn't tell the whole tale of how hard a track it is probably to win it and what sort of horse. I think I may be wrong, but... From a mem- just by memory here, mo- a lot of them races in Saturday around Epsom, it paid to be up with the pace. You know, I know it's very in distance and stuff, but the wo- love was about the only one that come from anywhere off the pace to win on Saturday. Like, you know, it's a, it's funny. Like, like you wouldn't think. Like I've seen, before, I've seen last year with the Derby, the sort of they went off a frantic pace last year again, and the end it was a blanket finish. So it shows you what sort of. It doesn't always pay to be in the front end, but as you said, Saturday was very funny. The likes of there were sort of more prominent races for whatever reason is out there. I'm not too sure if there's any bias in the track. I know they were saying stall one, bring this king was a total negative. That was the that's the, nobody's ever won the Derby in that stall. Uh, it's usually courses. It's the same though. One. I think stall, stall tens never had a winner, but stall elevens had the most winners. So, but I think that makes same, it all. I, I think that makes it all intriguing. Yeah it's, <laughs> yeah, it's very strange, but I, but I think that made it all the more interesting on English King's behalf. They're turning around saying that no horse has ever won the Derby from stall one, that he was going to break. Trends are there to be broken. Um, he was, as you said to me before, you thought he was staying on very well at the end. He finished, uh, where did he actually finish? He finished well down the field. It was fifth, he ended up in the end. Uh, Frankie de Tory made a couple of comments after that they were saying that he was making headway and that he was very inexperienced. Um, in between three three and one furlong, he couldn't pick up. And he was doing his, all his best work at the finish. He was just inexperienced. Um, I think that was a big concern that probably coming here was inexperienced. But I don't think he let himself down. I think that maybe the race wasn't run to suit him. And another, if, in hindsight, if Frankie had another go at it, he would do things a lot differently, but you don't get another go. You get one go at the derby, and that's just it. Uh, what do you think of English Kings? What was it? 
Would you take any positives from that or would you back it next time or not? I would give them another go. I mean, it's very hard to take anything from that race, really. The, you see how the season unfolds a bit. Only thing, you know, English King, in my eyes, he, that there bunch that finished behind the three that got away, he was doing the best work at the end. But, you know, <laughs> pardon the pun, but I suppose the horse had already bolted. Um, yeah, well... They weren't too hard on the horses, maybe. No, no, nobody, nobody was ever, nobody was ever catching the winner, and there was no doubt about that. There, I thought it was very interesting. Jimmy Heffernan's statements on Russian Empire. He said he ran very well, but the winner was just too far in front. I am delighted with Russian Empire. There'll be more in front, more days in front of him. Uh, Russian Empire was very, very well fancied all week. Couple of shrewd judges. I think the fact that Kevin Blake tipped it up was one of the, probably. The, the market mover of the day because in these big races, Kevin Blake's a man to have on your side and he's connected to Bally Doyle and he knows what's going on. But it's finished seventh through Russian Empire. And uh, as you say, when, you, when your stable partners win in the race, I don't think I don't think any of them get that hard a race. I think you could run most of them horses this week again and it, there, wouldn't, there wouldn't be too many. The Derby's always a race where they say it's a, it's a hard race to recover from. I, I can't say there'll be too many having too many there be no recovery time here, would there? They didn't get a race. No, they never got into it, really, should they? No. Um, the, I know I wrote a piece you last week, and I seem, I seem to think that Bally Doyle held all the aces. I, ma- I think I mentioned every horse in some sort of capacity, except Serpentine. <laughs> well, yeah, I, I, I don't think you're wrong. I, I tell you what, I've, I've seen tips for all sorts in the race. Every horse in the race had some sort of fan. I don't believe I've seen anyone tipping that horse. And I do believe it was the, the value of Emmett McNamara. I doubt the donkey booking, but it put you off. But as you, your fancy of the race, I've been writing thinking, was uh, Vatican City. And Potter Beggy said, my lad will improve from that. It was only his fourth run. He's won for another day. And I think that sums up everything. That, that As you said, the horse had bolted. The race was over. There was no race in, in hindsight. And you were just getting them home. It finished eighth, Vatican City. And that was the horse coming into the race where a lot of people had in their radar thinking that, I think it, was, it actually went off the starting price and right and saying it was still a big price, but there was a lot of people fancied it. And it was just, I think it's one, the not, it went off 17 to 2 at the beginning. I think that's a horse to, to remember next time out, Fat Against City. I think it's really one that will that's will pop up. Yeah. No, I do fancy it to run run and win some decent races. Um, the one horse I do think will win decent races, but obviously back on trip, is the fourth, Chemical. It's probably, I would say, the horse to possibly take out of it. It could well turn out to be the classiest horse, albeit it'll only maybe mile, mile and a quarter at mm. most. I don't think I saw it a minute and a half. No, but I'm reading the race comments here, right? And it said sweating, race keenly in fifth and fourth. It wasn't, like, it was, it was very keen the whole way through the race. If you look back there, where it mattered. And I think a lot of that there, they can say he didn't get the trip and all, but racing keenly that early on in the race surely would have exhorted him for later on in the race as well. I think yeah. the, the race wasn't run truly, so you can't turn around and say, that he didn't get the trip. Obviously, Ossie Murphy's a far better judge of a horse than us, than we'll ever be, right? But the fact of it is, the fourth is no, fourth in the derby, and they said he didn't get the trip. It's very hard to, to say he didn't get the trip because there's horses behind which people will be delighted with the run. Do you know what? It's, it's, it, it really is a mindset more than anything that were the horses given an easy time and did horses overtake them when it was beaten. But at the same time, it's all about the prize money. It's Jesus Right down, they're finished. There's some difference between a fourth and fifth in the derby, finishing sixth. The prize money's colossal, it's more than when you're made in hurdle around Clown Mail, anyway, isn't it? <laughs> a few pound extra, uh, uh, maybe a couple of shillings, not too much. Like. <laughs> the horse that I think that ran for out, out of the really good, it finished ninth place. Jessica Harton's horse, Gold Maze, uh, race wide. We felt a David Egan, very good wee jockey, I would not say a bad word about him. Coming in the home straight, he was still on the outside and he, was, he hung left and he weakened inside the last furlong. He was 150 to 1 in that race 
I knew Jessica Harton. She doesn't really run horses for the sake of it. She's, the horse was was there to do its best work, and it finished ninth. But it was a it was a far better ninth than than what it, in paper it says. I think that horse will go on to do maybe not big things, but he'll be winning. He'll be winning a pot here or there, and I would I would like to follow that horse to likes of Galway. Gold Maze is going to pop up somewhere around there. I don't think he'll just at this level. It's hard to know. Group ones. It's hard to get win a group one wherever you, whatever way you look at it. And I think this year alone, there's a lot of good horses that won't get where they need to because of the racing. Like the racing is just, it's very competitive. A lot of these horses would have had another maybe run in them, maybe another two runs, who knows. But this year, whatever's going on in the world, sure everything's up the left. So I think we're, we're always going to have a strange derby. And if anyone thought the favourite was going to swoosh in here, I think that they were probably delusional because the preparation hasn't been far from ordinary. Like, and as you say, 25 to one winner serpentine, it was probably expected, wasn't it? Well, <laughs> uh, uh, there wasn't many who thought it, but the sort of year it is, the expect the unexpected, I suppose. Is, yeah. Uh, you know, uh, serpent, like I say, serpentine, I was very taken by love. We, Spoke earlier, thought love um, holds possibly every chance there in the arc. Like I, I'm a real big fan of love. On at the end of the day, serpentines run near enough the same time, same course and distance. So I'd be keeping on the right side of serpentine there. I know Alan McNamara came out after and said that Aidan O'Brien had told him it'll definitely it'll get a mile six, no problem. So, um. But now whether it'll go till the ledger or, or not after one the derby, it's just hard know. to know. It's uh, the way thing I think. Is he a horse that needs to be sort of out in front? Like if a horse came to challenge him the other day, I wonder how much he would have found for pressure. You know, people say to me he didn't have a freebie. Emma McNamara said he had a freebie coming down the hill. Like the jockey on board said it. People these. Pundits are coming out and saying he didn't have a freebie in the race. He was made the work, but he was. There was no doubt about it. Coming around the home turn, the, the race was his, and and nobody was challenging. So he probably was just freewheeling a lot of the time. Like there was no. If someone was up there the whole way, if they got a, if another horse got to his side guard the whole way through, you wonder what he have really went on with it, or what he sort of pulled back. You don't know, like like I that. Being by Galileo, that is one of their traits. The way, they just don't lie down. So, again, it would have been interesting to see something up alongside, but it was... Now, he did slow down. I was reading, you know, the last two furlongs at times and stuff. Now, he definitely slowed down the last couple of furlongs, but, again, it would have took Frank. <laughs> Goodness knows what. Yeah, right, Item, but um, again, there was a list I seen of horses that he's run the Derby in quicker time. Massar, Harzan, See the Stars, which a lot of people arguably say is one of the best ever. Serpentine, his time is quicker. It makes sense. But the one that I was very eye catch by, I ran the fan, it was pushed along right from the start. I think this horse. William Buick was told to make the run of this horse because he was the very start. He really pushed this horse along, and he he never seemed just really happy. But then see the last, I think it was really the last furlong. He sort of went again, like, and I wondered if he was given the luxury of the start, would he have came with a rattle lot around the fan? Because the way that he finished off and he stuck his neck out in the end there. From if you watched the race to the start, you wouldn't have thought there would he had a chance that it. He looked all but beaten. He looked. He actually looked his, his odds with the way he started the race, but he finished the race. I thought he was really one of the most taken for the winner. I think he was the one I would take out of that. Wherever Aiden would go with him, I think it's a it's a body to a lottery. Is that many? Like, there's probably any horse of his in this race will probably win next time, except Mogul. I don't know. I think that they should, they should put him in a claimer and a dock in September. I just can't have him. Maybe. I can't have him. <laughs> I think Mogul now, listening to um, people that was there and seeing him again, I still thought he was maybe carrying a bit of condition now. Um, I, Aidan O'Brien did say 
after Ascot, you know, they would really have wanted a run on him before Ascot. Run at Ascot, and then that would have been him fully let um, for the derby. But they only get one run in them, and you know, see yeah. still onlookers there um, at the parade ring side seem to think that um, he was maybe still just not. I don't know. I think that I think he's. I don't think he's. This Braden angle will come from. He's just a fantastic Braden. The Braden's immaculate, but I don't think he's as good as the Braden makes out. And I think they're going to keep making excuses for this lad. He's he's entered in the Tattersall Gold Cup and the Irish Champion Stakes. And tell you what, if he wins either of them, I would be I would be shocked. So it's, there's no I can't his entries. They're not. He's not no big entries. And I think the fact that he was. Their main contender this year was, I don't know where that came from. His run at Ascot was was very ordinary. They excused that there for because he's coming off a 228 day break. His run before it was on a break. He was he finished fourth at at seven to two that day at Newmarket. I think that was and that was another. Where do you go? Like you, I think you can't keep making excuses for the the horse. I don't think. That he's going to do anything. I think he's one of the horses that slipped through the net, and I just think that he's. I'll be surprised if he does that. And he's going to go off probably even money favourite next run again. But I wouldn't. He'll not have my money. Had my money at Ascot, he'll, he'll not have it again. He's not going to have a penny off me. He, as I say, when he runs in the claimer and the dog, I may put a favour on him. Or you can give me a lend for a favour part. <laughs> <laughs> as someone said, I, I wouldn't put counter. I wouldn't put counterfeit money on him. <laughs> one back on my stool man. no as lad, as lad um, we said I think he's the only horse in the race that I, I thought the other day is pathetic and there's so much talk like Ryan Moore on one of Aidan O'Brien's favourite horses for the Derby at 7-1 to one, I think that told you everything I really do if that horse was any doing anything at home he would have been off he would have been challenged in 5-2 favourite with Camico no doubt and Camico even being 5-2 with all the the worries about the stamina, st- all that there. I think that was another disgrace of a price. Five to two for a horse that, that doesn't even know a stay of the distance. Should be better throwing your money in, on a band of bingo or a scratch card, would you not? Well, I just think, you know, when he drops back and triples with the making of him, um, like I Oh, no doubt, yeah, you're right. You're totally right. That's the making. But this distance here today uh, on the derby, the, that was one mile four was never going to be his ground. And that's this is where the angle was. The connection said that the horse they thought was good enough for the Derby, but he, they didn't think he would stay. And I think that nobody's ever suggested otherwise. There was always that doubt, wasn't there? Uh, yeah, no, there was. Like at the end of the day, I said in the piece that I wrote um, that Rowan Lyon finished third in the Derby, and you know this lad was sort of they thought much the same of. Him as they did Rowan Lane. You seen how much of a success he was whenever they dropped him back on trip. So I think I think it was his class that got him fourth at the end of the day. And that's just how classy an animal he is. And whenever he drops back, it'll be the making of him. And he'll be the one will he's the one to take out of it at shorter distances, I think. If you're looking a horse to fall over a mile four out of it Well, I think Serpentine's future might, you know, well lay a bit further, but they'll obviously keep him at a mile four since he's come out and done that in the Derby. Yeah. Um, well, the curse of the Derby. I think the Derby winners don't have a good. A lot of them don't do too much after the Derby, do they? I think this boy could probably be a wee bit different. To tell you the truth, I think it'd be interesting to see, like being available at all is a twenty-five to one. It'd be interesting next time out when he's two to one favoured. Would you still be as confident? Because I, I don't know. If he, if there's a lot to be said about it, isn't there? Like this race was. Just... If he comes out and backs it up, it could be a serious, serious animal, you know. Um, yeah. Like I said, by them times are, he's you know run same course and distance in around the same time as Love, and everybody's not and raving about her, and she was rated 116 before Saturday, so. It makes sense. Like there's a lot. <laughs> it's just it's it's. You know. <laughs> it's a good super... course, but. How good is he? Yes. That time will tell. Right, the horse to take out of it. Who's your horse? Who's going to win next time out? Give us the next time out winner in this race. 
well, as I said already, Kamiko is one to follow over the shorter distance. I would, I'd stay with Serpentine. There would be nothing there to make me think, you know, he'd be liable to lay down the next time, you know. Yeah. Well, that mine's going to be around the fan. That's the one that I think that I'll be all over next time. I wouldn't care if that horse is one to six next time, that he's getting all every penny that I have. I'm going to beg, steal, or borrow. <laughs> We're going to leave the show there today. Thank you very much for joining us in the show, and we'll have you back very soon. No bother. Cheers.